do. Consider these words from the Collect. Who alone canst order the unruly wills and affections of sinful men? Grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest, and desire that which thou dost promise, that so among the sundry and manifold changes of the world, our hearts surely there may be fixed where true joys are to be found. The very first praise is critical to our understanding the world and our place in it. We want to follow our own hearts, that has done really wills and affections of sinful men, which will lead us not to heaven, but to hell if left unchecked. This explains why the world is in such a horrible state, as people are naturally inclined to follow their sinful wills and affections rather than follow God. Just think, all the problems of this world could be easily prevented if people would just open their hearts to God and the Holy Ghost. Alas, since people are naturally resistant to God, there will always be some sort of evil in this world. The only goodness in this world comes from those who have the Holy Ghost in their hearts and reject the wicked ways of our natural inclinations and Satan. We are called not to be a part of the world and be set aside as holy. The Holy Ghost will help us to be holy if we will but let him into our hearts. We have to internalize, internalize his commands into our hearts through listening and then through repetition, action. This is the only way we can follow his commandments and show the world we follow him. For all the above to happen, we have to let God into our hearts, souls, minds, and bodies, and let his directions carry us through life. In order to be true believers, we have to actualize our stated beliefs. beliefs. Actions show that we don't just talk the talk, but that we walk the walk as well. This means we have to live out our Christian faith, and not just talk about it. God can and will help us do this, but if only if we let him into our hearts. Our life will be better if we follow his directions and if we let God into our hearts to help us do so. And if we allow God to rule us and desire his help, we will be able to attain a state of happiness we will then deserve. He knows what is right and what is wrong for us. He does not want us to lead so-called puritanical lives with no fun allowed whatsoever, but we must have fun the right way and not the wrong way. The right way can lead to a lifetime of happiness, whereas the wrong way leads to a lifetime of misery. It is as St. Paul says, we must have moderation in all things. Too much of a good thing can end up becoming a very bad thing. This is why God puts limits on us, not to punish us, but to help us live our lives in a spiritually and physically healthier manner. Many people think that God forbids things for us because he does not want us to have fun. Nothing could be further from the truth. He forbids things harmful for our spiritual well-being and allows us to have clean, spiritual, joyous things in our life to develop our spiritual well-being. Those things, those people confuse the things that are harmful for our spiritual well-being with fun and think that the things that are actually helpful for our spiritual well-being are not fun when it is completely not the case. The Holy Spirit will help us to see what is harmful for us and what is not harmful for us. We need God's help. This is one of the places the Holy Ghost comes in to be able to want for ourselves that which he wants us for us. The colic asks us to allow God into our hearts to bend our will towards his will and his wants. If we can desire what he wants, our ability to follow his instructions will be much enhanced. And not only will they be much enhanced, but the more we follow his instructions, the easier it will be for us to continue on that straight and narrow path towards heaven. 
It is like practicing any sort of learned skill. The more you practice at it, the better you will get. Of course, we will never be fully perfect at it, but as long as we keep doing our best to get as close as we can to perfection, that is all that matters. We are God's creatures, first among all his creations with all the privileges which we like and all the responsibility which we are not so keen on which come of that st status. All good comes from God who never changes, the constant, the true bearing in the world and the constant state of flux. While the world may change, the word will never change no matter what happens in the world today. His word is a refreshing constant in a world where nothing ever seems certain. The ways of the, this world go to and fro and are in a constant state of flux. However, God's word always stays the same, and its meaning never changes, as God never changes. As God is truth, which by its nature cannot change, so should we never change in our beliefs towards him. So, how can we hear? When Jesus got ready to leave this world for his, he told the disciples that he would send them the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, to keep them in him and to help them understand what they so far had been unable to truly grasp. Unless we allow the Holy Ghost to enter into our hearts, we'll never truly be able to understand that is which is from God. This is an important message with messages that are not from God being bombarded across the world through principalities and powers of this world. Only the Holy Ghost can help us remain grounded within the truth. We need the Holy Ghost to enter into us that we might be able to hear the word of God. And more important than just hearing the word, we need the Holy Ghost to be able to act upon the word. We must allow the Holy Ghost to enter into our hearts and souls so we can understand what God has for us. It is that simple. Open your heart. Pray for God to send the Holy Ghost into your open heart. For if the Holy Ghost help, and you can hear, understand, and act on the word, the time is now, not tomorrow. The time has come indeed. How will you act? It is by our actions we are known. Be of God, live of God, act of God.